I know a lot of you think that meditation is hard or meditation just doesn't work for you, but that's actually not true. And the sooner you can get behind the idea that you need to be meditating, the sooner you can change your world on a radical level. I'll tell you why in this video. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, my name is Crystal Ann Compton. Welcome to this video, welcome to my channel. If you're new to the channel or to me, I would encourage you to please subscribe because in 2017 and beyond, we're gonna be doing some really, really cool teaching and some really cool things that will help you to up-level your entire life. Now in this video, one of the things we're gonna talk about that will help you to do that is meditation. And I can hear the collective sigh already. <laughs> I spent a long time actually thinking that I too could not actually meditate. I would spend, you know, minutes and minutes and minutes and minutes just struggling in the struggle, in the challenge of meditation with my mind racing, me feeling like this was all worthless. It just seemed difficult. And ultimately back in the day, I gave up. I just figured well, I'm just not a match for meditation. However, it wasn't until I learned just how powerful meditation is that I decided that I was just going to figure it out no matter what. And I'm glad I did because meditation is like so many other things. It takes time. It does take work, but at some point you reach this tipping level where you move through the challenge and into what I call the sweet spot and you get it. You realize, oh, this is why everybody meditates. But let me tell you what meditation is. Meditation is an opportunity for us as souls, spirits, and people to spend time proximate to source energy or that energy we would call God energy. And when I say proximate, I actually want you to visualize it a certain way. I want you to visualize it as if you're walking into a room and God himself or herself or itself or their self, all the selves of God, are sitting on a sofa in the room and you can just walk right in, scooch on by and sit down right on the cushion next to God. If you wanted to like put your arm out and give him a little hug, you could, that's how close you would be. That's what proximate means and that's what meditation does. With my students, I often describe meditation in a certain way. First, I compare it to something like prayer. And prayer is similar to two people going out on a date night and leaning across the table and saying, hey, how was your day? Oh my gosh, what happened? Tell me more. And communicating and getting closer. That's what prayer is. It's about the communication and the development of the relationship. Meditation is different. And I compare it to the same couple who we just saw on date night, sitting next to each other on the sofa or sitting in the same room together. And she's reading a book and he's writing in his notebook and neither one are talking to each other, but they're so comfortable. They're still in each other's presence. They're still together and they're still connected and building that connection. That's what meditation is. That's what meditation does. It allows us to slide down the sofa, sit right next down to God, and then take in the vibration of source energy. And that's the powerful part. Because I've taught you before, let me teach you again. When two energies come together, each energy is changed as a result of the impact or of the interaction. However, it is always the energy that is more strong, more powerful, and more dominant that makes the substantial change to the lesser energy each and every time. So the lesser energy has to acclimate to the signature of the stronger energy. This means it has to level up. To the position of that stronger energy and when it levels up it becomes like that stronger energy same principle with meditation when we're sitting down next to source energy or in the presence of dynamic spirit we are forced to level up because we are the passive energy we are the lesser energy so it changes our actual signature and for the period of time that we spend on the couch, which is in meditation, and in particular in the sweet spot of meditation, we are allowing our signature to be recalibrated, restructured, modified, and up-leveled. That means our frequency changes. 
And so if we spend time in meditation two, three, four, five, seven days a week, that means we're giving ourselves seven separate opportunities to change our vibration. Change your vibration, change your world. Raise your frequency, raise the conditions and the quality of that which you experience in your world. You want to be happy? Meditate. You want to be successful? Meditate. You want to attract a new love into your life, a new job into your life, a new house, a new location? Meditate. Those are high vibration goals. And the way to reach them is to carry the right frequency as you carry the goal at the same time. And the highest frequency that we can attain in this human body is the frequency that we become when we're connected to and proximate to source energy, sitting right there next to God on the sofa of the universe. That's how we change. And that's why meditation is so important. Now I tell my students often that even if 29 of the minutes that you spend in meditation suck, and are hard and are just you patrolling your thoughts and bringing it back to center. If that's what you're doing for 29 minutes out of the 30 minutes, it's still valuable. The mistake that many people make is thinking that those 29 minutes are worthless or a waste of time. They're just as important actually as that one minute you spend in bliss or that one minute you spend in absolute connectedness. Those 29 minutes are sending a transmission into the universe. And that transmission says, you're ready. I'm here, God. I'm available. I want to commune with you. Now, even though you're not feeling it in terms of connectedness, spirit is responding to it. Anytime we step in the direction of spirit, you better believe that spirit moves right to where we are meets us where we are and gives us the resources and the energy that we need. And so if we persevere with meditation, if we count those 29 minutes of struggle as victory and just as important as the one minute, if we keep going, keep showing up, keep making ourselves available, meditation will become easier and easier. We'll spend more time, more minutes in the sweet spot than in the struggle. Soon it'll just be two minutes of clicking in or getting into that or sitting down on the sofa, if you will, next to spirit and the rest of the time will be ecstasy. You won't want to stop meditating. It will be addictive because you're changing. It's changing the structure of who you are. You can see the miracles that are starting to happen in your life. That's why you can't give up on meditation. That's why you can't say it's not for you. It's for everybody. Did you know that we were all born into this reality with an innate ability to make this connection? We were born with the key that unlocks the door to this connection and to this vibration. Meditation is for everybody. I just want to encourage you, if you've never meditated, start playing around with it. If you have meditated, but you've gone away from it, I want you to be very clear that you need to return to it so that you can be more dynamically, spiritually connected. And if you're somebody like me who thinks that, or who used to think that meditation is not for you, you just don't have the kind of mind for it. I want you to know that that's not correct. You can meditate. You can sit down on the couch proximate to source energy, and through meditation, you can change your life.